Hey guys, welcome to the Joe Jaguar Show. Let's talk about eyepieces. Going from the most basic or cheapest ones to, um, you know, the better ones. Now I can't, you know, every uh, maker probably makes sometimes between three and six, seven different lines. And there's probably a dozen different manufacturers, maybe even more, two dozen. So obviously I cannot show uh, every single light piece ever made. This is just a general uh, idea, just to show you guys um, some differences. Again, okay, so let's start from the most basic, the most cheapest out there. Now these are 0 0.96 eyepieces. This comes with the most cheapest telescopes there are. If you see it comes with any of this, don't even bother getting that telescope. These type of accessories has been obsolete for a long time, okay? As you can see there, it, um, it's not even a full inch um, uh, diameter, so it's 0 0.965. Anyway, usually they have, they call, have an R in front, a Huygens with an H, you know, that type of thing. Uh, don't even bother, uh, guys. If you see a telescope with this size eyepiece, 0 0.965, just bypass it altogether. You know, because if, if it comes with this, basically, these eyepieces are basically garbage. It just has a two element in there, and it's only going to be a 20 to 25 degree field of view, which is tiny. Um, but also, if it has that size, it means the diagonal is also that size. For you to upgrade the diagonal to, you know, I mean, you can't change the focuser on that um, telescope. It's going to be very expensive, probably more than uh, that cheapy telescope. So you probably will have to change the diagonal and you're probably not going to find that in the used market. It goes from a point uh, 0.965 diagonal, uh, the inside barrel, to an inch and a quarter top side of the diagonal that's probably 50 bucks alone and then to get let's say palazzo eyepieces where it's four elements instead of two and the 50 degree field of view instead of a 20 to 25 way better each of those if you find used market 25 dollars each you're talking about 75 dollars for the eyepiece another 50 for that special type of diagonal it's more than the whole telescope maybe even 50 percent more um, there's no point. So basically, if you see this size, just just forget about it. Because also, not only that, the finder scope's probably junk, the, the, the mount, everything probably is uh, crappy quality. So basically, if you, if you buy a telescope, make sure it has the inch and a quarter size. But, however, saying that, there could still be, which is much better, by the way, but still, saying that, even if you see type of thing where it has inch and a quarter size, sometimes they still give what they, these are not Huygens, but they do have Huygens in an inch and a quarter size. Now, instead of it being 25 degree field of view, the inch and a quarter Huygens is 30 degree field of view, but still only two element. Again, it's garbage. Now the good thing is you normally don't have to change your focuser or diagonal, you just have to upgrade your eyepieces. But if it has those eyepieces, it's a general rule that maybe a good portion of this scope package is not of good quality. So bypass that as well, I would say. Now then you get, you know, it depends on different companies, Skywatcher, Mead, Celestron, every single company will give uh, some of them call them the super set. This one's called the Mead MA. Um, but basically, these are better than the Huygens. So if you get these ones, at least they're better to start, but you're still gonna need to upgrade them, okay? So basically, the SMAs, the Mead uh, MAs, the uh, super set eyepieces, whatever they're called, they're better. Um, there are three elements now instead of uh, two elements. Uh, your field of view is probably going, you know, 40 to 50, depending on the model, of course. Um, so it is much better. Uh, but again, it's not great. So again, this would be the next step would be the 0.965 uh, 
uh, Huygens eyepieces, then the inch and a quarter Huygens eyepieces, then the superset MA sets, uh, um, SMA sets type of thing uh, would be the next step. Um, you, there is also a, I would say slightly better, is a, the, you know, the Kellner eyepieces. Um, you know, they're a little bit better. Um, it's, it's made out of, this one's metal. That one is felt like very, maybe, I, well, the barrel I think was metal too, but you can just tell it's very thin metal. Where this one just feels it's much thicker metal. It's uh, a better eyepiece. Again, the Kellner would be the next step up. But again, what I recommend from there on is just maybe bypass it. You can find a lot of eyepieces in the used market like Palazzo eyepieces. This one is like a Omcon Palazzo. Uh, this one is a Celestron Silver Top Palazzo. It doesn't really matter. Uh, this one is a Teleview Palazzo, which is probably one of the most expensive Palazzo eyepieces you could buy, probably about $150 for this eyepiece alone new. But again, you could find lesser no-name brand of Palazzo eyepieces um, in about the $20 to $25 mark. Okay guys, so that's where I would recommend is uh, for people is to get a Palazzo eyepiece. Start at that level and upwards. Um, that's where I think the eyepiece is, is pretty good. Um, so the Palazzo eyepiece, it just doesn't matter. The king of the hill is the Teleview Palazzo eyepiece. Does it mean this one? Um, you know, because you could probably buy a no-name brand Palazzo eyepiece for $50 new, and this guy's $150 new. Is this guy 10 times better than this? No, you're just basically buying the quality of this guy and the quality control of, of this guy. Of course, this one has a rubber eye cup. This one might be fully mold coated over, you know, the cheaper Palazzo's might be just coated, then fully coated, then fully multi-coated. So those coatings add a lot of money, uh, you know, to the cost of the eyepiece. Some have these rubber parts on the eyepiece, easier to hold. Some are blackened. Um, the edges so that no stray light comes out. There's, and that's why an, uh, a Palazzo eyepiece or a similar type of eyepiece could be a lot more because it could just have better coatings and um, different features to it. But okay. Then the next step would be something like that where it's a Super Palazzo. Now what's the difference between a Palazzo and a Super Palazzo? The Palazzo's again is where I recommend new people start in eyepieces. Uh, they're good and you may not need to upgrade. Your regular Palazzo light pieces are basically usually four element and 50 degree field of view. Again, it could be just coated, fully coated, multi-coated, fully multi-coated. Some have rubber eye cups, some don't. But anyway, the difference between Palazzo and Super Palazzo is that usually this guy is 52 degree field of view. Just that extra, just squeezing two degree field of view in there, that's basically it. But um, again, if you, get, if you can get into Palazzo, Super Palazzo's, uh, then great. Now, the next step would be something similar to these two, where this one is a Mead 5000 series. Uh, it's like a Super Palazzo, but it's a five element. So it'll be a little bit sharper over the four element. And this has a feature where the eye the eye guard you can roll it up or down but it also has instead of a 50 degree field of view or a 52 degree field of view this one has a 60 degree field of view now the radian um, and there's different ones out there basically again teleview top of the line eyepiece uh, probably in a, a range of new would be 300 to 350 uh, these are kind of similar this would be like if you can't afford the Teleview line, you can consider the Mead version. Uh, both are like 60 degree field of view. Both again, have that kind of click stop where you can make uh, the lens go further down. So you have uh, a bit more uh, space between your eye and the lens or not. But the price just keeps going up for the field of view. And sometimes by putting that extra one or two lenses in there, some are five, six element. 
Um, and you can get eyepieces that are 70 degree field of view, 80, 90, 100. Now they're all the way to 120 degree field of view. Um, however, they are very expensive. Some of those extreme wide angle eyepieces could be in Canadian like $1,200 per eyepiece and up. So after that, I would, let's say something like this or this. Now this is the Nagler. The Nagler is in 82 degree field of view. The mid version of that uh, is 84 degree field of view, ultra wide. Um, they no longer make these. Um, these are expensive eyepieces. Like, for instance, this Teleview Nagler, uh, which this used to be the top of the line in the Teleview. Uh, now Teleview makes an Ethos, which again could go up to $1,200 an eyepiece, depending on uh, the size, like the 21 millimeter Ethos. This guy here is probably worth about 550 Canadian before tax. So you're looking at, at least $600 an eyepiece. But it's a, most people would consider the Teleview Nagler to be pretty much the best there is. Uh, you, you can't, there's a couple other names that are good like Pentex and etc. But I'm just showing you a couple of different things. Now these, when they were made back in the late 80s and 90s, this version made 4000 series, ultra wide angle, 84 degree field of view. They, they had up to eight elements in there, were extremely good. They were almost um, the comparisons uh, people used to do were virtually identical. It's almost a match. Now, of course, the new line of, uh, is not as good, but these are just the best that there is. Um, if you can find these guys used, if you do, pick them up. If you don't have anything, you know, if you have something like Palazzo light pieces, Super Palazzo, pick these guys up. They're very good. You can find these guys fairly cheap now because they've been discontinued for at least 20 years or, so, or something. Um, it doesn't need to be the Teleview line because they are very expensive. Uh, you can go for some of these. There's a few other name brands out there like Explore Scientific. There's at least a dozen companies and each company probably again makes three to six different lines. And basically it's, you know, by price you can tell which, uh, how good they are starting at the $50 range and going up to hundreds of, uh, hundreds of dollars each to again, thousands of dollars per eyepiece. But anyway, guys, so this is where going from the most basic or junky kind. Uh, again, I say start at the Palazzo. If you can, you might be satisfied there. And you know, between $50 to $150 for a Palazzo eyepiece, you're, you're good to go. Maybe you want something with a little bit wider field of view like in these two um where the price is probably around hundred dollars to three hundred dollars uh type of thing uh, and then you have the extreme wide angle type of thing uh well they're not as wide as now there's a bigger wide angle but you can get something like this where you know they're three hundred five hundred dollars each to end up uh, type of eyepieces. So that's where I would, that's just a few examples uh, of um, eyepieces. Um, so again, most people will probably fall in this range, the, you know, not the extreme, especially if you're starting out, then I would say um, stay in this, this range here and maybe even look at the used market. You can find really good quality uh, for half the price People are just upgrading to this type of quality and they're dumping these guys for sometimes 20, 25 bucks each. They don't need them. Pick them up if you guys are just starting at a hobby versus this junky stuff. If it comes with, your scope does come with these guys, save it in case you ever do sell it, your scope. Give it free with those, but keep your better quality eyepieces. Anyway, Joe Jaguar, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll see you next time.